Dom here from Essential RC, thanks for tuning in. So I recently reviewed the FMS Rafale 80mm EDF jet. Of all the EDF jets I have flown over the years, I have to say this is up there near the top in terms of the most capable and it has the widest flight envelope. It really does most things that you would want to do with a scale EDF jet. It does fast flight, stable slow flight, aerobatics, uh, and interestingly one of the best things you can do with this is high alpha flight. You can point it into a breeze and uh, use max elevator and then balance it on the uh, on the throttle for some slow passes. It also looks fantastic in the sky with its very high visibility yellow and blue scheme. But the question for me after flying a model like this a few times is how can it be improved? And the first thing you can do with most EDF jets is add an afterburn effect. So this is the afterburner from AK Afterburners who are actually based here in the UK. So uh, this is the kit and you can see what we've got here is the afterburner light itself, its controller. The controller links to your throttle channel and to the balance plug on your LiPo flight battery. You've got uh, quite a long wire between the uh, afterburner and the controller, which is good for long thrust tubes. Then you've got some zip ties, which are going to be used to secure the afterburner onto the back of your uh, brushless motor, which is going to be in your uh, EDF fan. Uh, and then you've also got some silver tape as well, which we, we apply within the thrust tube to get the maximum output of light out the back of the thrust tube. So what I'm going to do now is go through the sequence of steps that I went through to install this afterburner kit from AK Afterburners into the FMS Rafale 80mm EDF jet. Okay, first step is to remove the hatch so we can get to the EDF unit and then we undo the two screws that hold the EDF unit in place and pull that out carefully. You can see here how I'm holding the afterburner against the back of the brushless motor making sure that the cable, the positive and negative cable from the afterburner to the controller is pointing downwards and is aligned with the three phase wires that are coming out of the brushless motor because that wire is going to need to travel alongside the three phase wires to the front of the fuselage. Next step is to secure the afterburner against the back of the brushless motor. So you take two of the zip ties and you can see here in this image how I've put the zip ties through the back of the brushless motor. Now this takes a little bit of patience and if you do it with a, a pair of needle nose pliers just be careful not to damage the wires inside the brushless motor. Then do up the zip ties on either side make sure they're nice and tight and trim them off. There is a little bit of work to do inside the fuselage to make sure that the LED afterburner fits inside. So you can see here that I've had to remove uh, about a, a one and a half inch by three inch part of the foam at the forward part of the thrust tube where the two uh, thrust tubes meet. So you're going to have to reach inside with a sharpie blade and cut out this foam uh, and cut it out progressively until you can fit the after the EDF fan unit in place with its afterburner attached at the back on the brushless motor. So I'm showing here the view from the front and back of the thrust tube so you can see roughly how much foam I've had to remove. 
To get the best possible effect from the installed afterburner unit while it's in the air, you want as much light from that afterburner unit to be reflected down the thrust tubes and out the back of the Rafale jet. To do that, you need to invest some time installing the aluminium tape and lining the inside of the two thrust tubes in the back of the Rafale. Now this does take a bit of patience and what I'm showing here is that I've installed one strip and then progressively lined the inside of the right tube with short strips of that aluminium tape which is sticky backed uh, but it's still it's quite thin it does take some patience to do this and not make a mistake and here you can see I've done the left side as well uh, but after you've done that you want to access uh, through the hatch for the EDF unit and also line that area as well so as much light is reflected down those thrust tubes. While the silver tape is being installed you will need to have the EDF fan system removed but before putting it back in place and bolting it back onto the rails with the four screws you will need to guide the positive and negative wires from the uh, afterburner light through to the front of the fuselage. Now you want to do that following the same route as the three phase wires from the brushless motor. Uh, the best way to do that is to use uh, some uh, a carbon rod or a, a stiff piece of wire from the front to the back and then a maybe tape the black and red wires onto that and pull those through gently so that they can be reattached to the controller at the other end that you're going to have in the fuselage. Final step in the install process is to disconnect the throttle cable from your receiver that comes from the speed controller and plug that into the connector on the afterburner controller and then you're ready to go. There is a very simple calibration process to go through that is documented on the single sheet you get with the afterburner unit but after that then you are ready to get the maximum effect of this afterburner unit. So what I'm going to do now is show you the first flight that we had and the really great visual effect you get from this AK afterburner unit.